A sequence U1, U2, U3 is defined as the following, um, where U3, or sorry, write U3 in the form 2 to the power of P, where P is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so we're trying to find uh, U3 here. And another way of writing U3 would be the same as U2 plus 1. Because if you look at the uh, question there, it tells us that any term is found by going UN plus 1. So to get to 3, I would go 2 plus 1. And if we bring that a little bit further and using this now, that's the same as the square root of UN. So UN would be... Uh, u2 because we're coming from here that's my un in other words and i'm dividing that by un minus one so un minus one now that's a small n and a small one so that would be u2 subtract one so i have the square root of u2 over u2 minus one and the value of u2 from the question is 64 and that's over this uh the value of u2 take away one well that's u1 now we also know the value of u1 it's uh two from the question which is giving me the square root of 32. now the question wants it as a power so i'm just going to bring that up here so it's the square root of 32 which is the same as 32 to the power of a half. Um, it wants it to two to the power. So two to the power of five is the same thing as 32. So I can write it as two to the power of five to the power of a half. I'm using my log tables here really. And then to write it as a single fraction, I multiply the five by the half. So that's two to the power of five over two. So two to the power of five over two is the same as the square root of 32. B part one, the first three terms of an arithmetic sequence are as follows. Uh, by letting y is equal to e to the power of k in this arithmetic sequence, show that the following. An arithmetic sequence, as we know, is one where it has the same constant difference between each term. So they're telling us, they're giving us a little hint here, and they're telling us to let y is equal to e to the power of k. Now, if we look at our sequence in the question here, they have it started as five e to the power of minus k, followed by 13, followed by 5e to the k. Now, if we rewrite 5e to the minus k, that's the same as 5 times 1 over e to the positive k. So we know that that's the same thing if we have a negative power. Uh, so that's the same as 5 over e to the k if we write it as a single fraction. And I'll just put in my other two terms here. So my sequence is the same as 5 over e to the k, 13, and 5 e to the k. Now I'm going to let my e to the k as y. So that's the same as, so therefore, my sequence is now 5 over y, 13, and 5 times y. So that's my sequence. Next thing I'm going to do is look at the way they want our answer. They want it to be 5y squared minus 26y plus 5. So what I'm now going to look at here is how do I get the difference between two terms? So you know the way we take two terms away from each other to get the next term. Um, or to get the, the, the previous term. So that's the same as if we look at any term. So I'll call it tn plus 1. And if I take away the term before it, so Tn in other words, that would give me the difference, the common difference. So say for instance, if I want to find, if I go T3, take away T2, I get the common difference. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I have three terms. So if I go term three, subtract um, term two, that gives me the difference. But that's the same as maybe going term two, take away term one. They're both giving me the common difference. And I know those first three terms, T1, T2, and T3. So subbing in T3, I have 5y. Subbing in T2, I have 13. And I'm letting that equal to T2, which is 13. Subtract T1, which is 5 over y. I'm now just going to multiply across 
the whole line by y to get rid of that fraction really. So 5y by y gives me 5y squared, 13 by y is 13y, uh, another 13y, and then 5 over y times y, the y's will cancel, which is just leaving me with 5. If I rearrange it, tidy it up, move everything to the left-hand side, that will give me 5y squared minus 13y minus 13y plus 5 is equal to 0, and grouping the 13s gives me minus 26y plus 5 is equal to 0, and lo and behold, that's what they wanted in the top of the question. 5y squared minus 26y plus 5 is equal to 0. Part 2 to this question is use the equation in y in part b part 1 above to find the two possible values of k and give your answer in the form lnp or minus lnp. So the equation we found in part 1 was given as 5y squared minus 26y plus 5 is equal to 0. Now because the question wants our answers in log form, I know that it has to be like a decimal, so I'll need to use my minus b formula here. So from my log tables, y is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over uh, 2a. And filling that in, my b is negative 26, so minus minus 26 plus or minus the square root of minus 26 squared minus 4 times a, which is 5 times c, which is also 5. And that's all over 2a, which is 2 fives. And tidying up a little bit more, I get positive 26 plus or minus uh, 676 minus 100, all over 2 fives, which is 10. So that's giving me y is equal to 26 plus or minus 576 over 10. So I have now got y is equal to 26 plus or minus the square root there gives me positive 24 over 10. So therefore y is equal to um, 26 plus 24 over 10 and y is equal to 26 minus 24 over 10. So my two values for y here are five and y is equal to a fifth. So I solved for y, but the question in part one, if you scroll back up, is looking for k. And the question asks us here to find two possible values for k. So I know that y is equal to 5 and y is equal to 1 over 5. Now, if we substitute back in our e to the k for y, that means e to the power of k is equal to 5 and e to the power of k is equal to 1 over 5. And if I now use my log tables here, page 21, to solve for k. So this is the top right hand corner of my log table. So I'm using log uh, base e to the 5 is equal to k and log e to the 1 over 5 is equal to k. Um, log to the base e is the same as the natural log, so that's the same as ln 5 is equal to k and log e is the same as ln again, um, 1 over 5 is equal to k. So the question here says I have lnp and minus lnp. Well, there's my first value, ln 5 is equal to k, but my second value, if you go to your log tables on page 21 again, middle column down the bottom, it gives l, or sorry, log a 1 over x, is the same as minus log uh, base a to the x. So I'm going to use that here now to give me a negative log, or sorry, ln uh, 5. So there's my two values for k.